Here we go. Okay, yeah. This? Yeah. No. All right, ready. So, for the decomposition of reactant D at a particular temperature versus time, it was collected. So we have a negative K equals first order. This is a slope. Okay? This is a slope. All right? Unit here, which is for first order. It's a first order unit. 1 over S is first order unit. All right. Write the rate law. Rates equals what? K Do I need to do anything else? No, that's it. Determine the rate constant. All right? A negative K equals the slope. So, negative a negative 3.2 times 10 to the is that negative first? Negative first equals 3.2 times. Okay, well, that's what I just asked you all. All right, S to the minus 1. Okay, understand? That's how it becomes positive. All right, determine the rate half-life. What is the equation we're going to use for that? Zero point six nine three. All right. So we have a k value. We need to solve for one half. So we're going to plug this in. Three point two zero times ten to the negative third s to the minus one uh, e times t one half equals zero point six nine three. Okay. So divide. Uh, divide each side. Get the half. Three point two. I try to write what I can. All right, anybody have an answer? 217. I right, get rid of that. All right, next. So now we got to see if you actually understood what we were talking about earlier. All right. How much time is required for 10% of D to decompose to the time required for the second 10% to decompose? Okay. You got to solve it twice. So let's solve it once together. All right. How could I do the first one? What would I do? It's a first order reaction. What do I need to do? What equation am I going to use? Uh, Ln Okay. All right, so I have a k value already. Yes, but I don't have the time, so I'm going to say equals my K, which is what? 3.20 times 10 to the negative third times T. I'll put that in brackets. LN, concentration. What's my initial going to be? What's my initial going to be? Points. Because you're not paying attention, and this is a typical problem. What is my initial? 100. Not over 10. Over 90. All right, over 90. Okay. So it could be, you know, 10 over 9, you know. Or 0.9, whatever, it's just going to be the same thing. 
Okay, so now solve for t. Make sure in your calculator you can solve for t. What does t equal? Later. Make sure you can solve for t. Alright, anybody have an answer? 33 seconds. Okay, now, how would I set up the next one? Does anybody have trouble putting this in your calculator? Okay, how do I set up the next one? The same exact setup, 3.20 times 10 to the negative third times t equals ln, and I need help on the concentrations. 90, and what would I put on the bottom? 80. 90 and 80. Another 10% came off. We had 90 from here. We had to match this. Match because that's what we have left. We lost another 10%. So you could put what? What technically put? What's 10% of 90? Nine. So you could put 81 on the bottom or 80. Yeah. Uh, I, go ahead. We can, you can try it either way. It's both going to come out to be the same. All right. And then if I did LN of... What do you get? 37 seconds. Okay. All right. So there is your answer. Is that pretty easy? Uh, okay. You got to be able to do those things. It, those equations are on your AP chemistry reference table. So you're going to have to be able to do that. All right. No, your quiz would be up through page two of that. The stuff we did at the beginning of today and the end of last class. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to your notes, please. And Raina, just to clarify, the 10% has to be from the original 100%. Okay, can't do it the other way. All right, so a couple things. Uh, we already went over this, but it's good to see. All right. Not that. Uh, first order reactions, so a couple things that you want to make sure that you make a note of. Uh, these things right here that we're looking at. Uh, there's where my LN comes into play. Um, it's natural to want to finish first. There's a little mnemonic for you. LN of A, LN of P. All right. To want to fin finish second, that's upside down thinking. So just take a look. One over the concentration of A, one over the concentration of P is going to give you this slope versus time. LN of A or LN of P will give you a negative K. Right. So these things you have most given to you on the reference packet, but you have to know the negative K and the positive K. All right. There's no question about that. It's on your notes. All right. All right. So if there's something that you want to put on there, we just drew those two things. We just drew those. 
We did. All right, as temperature increases, rate increases. I don't know why this is not slideshow coming out nice for me. Let me see. Sorry about this. Hopefully we can get this working correctly. That would be nice. Okay. As temperature increases, rate increases because the rate K times A times B, as temperature increases, the uh, rate is going to increase. We're going to have more collisions, right? The stuff you did for homework. The collision model explains how the rate is affected by concentration and temperature. Greater concentra uh, uh, concentration more collisions per second, higher temperature, all right, faster particle uh, movement, more collisions per second, the activation energy is exceeded more often, all right, the activation energy is uh, exceeded more often. We're going to look at the activation energy uh, graph here in just a second, but the big thing is that collision stuff you did for homework and so forth, this, this is where a lot of the multiple choice type questions come from, the text in here and so forth, okay? Um, the problems that we do, I, I focus on our, our, our free response problems. Um, there are other questions that could uh, directly affect this or anything you don't have to do math for could be in a multiple choice, all right? Like this, all right? Very simple, all right? Any questions on this? I think you did this for homework. You didn't have any complaints. Homework tonight's for the weekend's about the same thing. All right, so we need to be able to draw these energy graphs. All right, so we have an activated complex. All right, so let's just say that right here um, we have this graph and we have our two reactants. Here's reactant one, here's reactant two. All right. In order for them to create a reaction, all right, they're going to have to smash together right here. All right, they're smashing together right here. Once they do that, then they're going to they're going to rearrange and then form their products. All right. All right, and then form the products. So the activation energy, so when you do this, you need to kind of know what we're looking at here. And I know some of you that have had me before, I talk about this graph a lot because it has so many different things, all right? If I'm going reverse, all right, this is my activation energy of my forward, all right? Ea of forward. All right, this is a very what type of reaction? Exo or endo? How do you know? Uh, that doesn't work for me. Um, all right, let's put some numbers. Let's put some numbers. Let's put a zero. Let's put a hundred. No, uh, and a fifty. All right, if I was to ask you thermochemically speaking, I always do what minus what for thermochem? All right, so products minus reactants. All right, so if I do products reactants here, I have zero minus a 50. What do I get? Negative 50, meaning heat given off. All right, meaning heat given off. All right. Okay. So you can always add arbitrary numbers and figure out where you are. But seeing this now, you should always know that this is going to be exothermic. What would an endothermic graph look like? It wouldn't go the other way. You still are going to go up, and then you come down, and then you end here. It's above the reactant energy, all right? So endo, all 
All right, so it's going to be above. All right, so you have to be able to do this. Now, the change in energy, all right, is right here. I went from 50 to zero. Change in energy. And that's what we just solved right here. All right, it's the same thing, same process, same thought process as thermochem. Now, imagine you're combusting in your backyard. All right, logs come from what? How long does it take for a tree to grow? A long time. So this is saying that if I had an exothermic reaction, and I had my ashes, this is all the energy it would take to put the log back together the way. The original reactants, right? So this activation energy, much higher in the reverse. It's much lower for an endothermic. All right, much lower. There's a big kind of difference between those two things. All right, uh, so we have the activated complex. We have the activation energy here. Uh, and of course, we all know this. If I add a catalyst, what will happen? It speeds it up, but it lowers my activation energy. Lowers EA with a catalyst. All right, so it's going to lower it with a catalyst. All right, so we have this many, many things that we're going to talk about. All right, uh, the temporary arrangement of atoms between R reactants and the product arrangement. About delta E, it is positive. So it has no effect on the reaction rate. It has no effect on the reaction rate. Okay, oh, do you need that back? Uh, no effect on the reaction rate. I went over what all those things, all right, what all those things were. I'm sorry, just looking at something. All right, so we're going to stop real quick. What did I go to, 1008? 